When you play a game, you play by the rules, right? And if you don't, the game levies some penalties on you. It's like that with economic and personal life as well. Economic interactions are governed by certain rules, which we call economic institutions. Economic institutions are typically written. Examples of such written institutions are constitutions, laws, as well as contracts which shape the way we interact with others. Those written institutions are called formal institutions. But the way we interact with others is also shaped, is also governed, if you wish, by rules which are not written anywhere. We call the unwritten rules of the game informal institutions. And sometimes they're even more important than the law of the land, if you wish. Now, formal or not, institutions crucially do two things for you, or to you. First, they draw lines between things you are allowed to and things you are not allowed to do. So they act as constraints on human interactions. And second, they shape the rewards and punishments you get under certain conditions. So institutions tell you, if you answer each question on the quiz correctly, you will get full marks. And if you don't submit a quiz, then you get zero marks. Institutions also tell you if you don't keep up with mortgage payments, your home may be repossessed. So whether they're form formal or not, institutions shape the incentives and constraints we all face when we interact with each other. Today, we'll see how the change in those rules also changes the distribution of payoffs across the interested parties. Rents is just another word in economics we use to label payoffs from playing a certain game, a certain interaction, if you wish. So if you want to prepare well for the live lecture, think about the games we discussed last week. Think about the rules. Think about how the equilibrium outcomes of those games depended on those rules. And try doing a mental exercise. If we slightly change the rules, will the outcomes change? Okay, so institutions shape the constraints agents face. But notice that those constraints can be different for the various parties involved. So, For example, if you are renting an apartment, you cannot sell it, but the owner can. As incentives and constraints are embedded in the concept of power, we can safely assume that economic institutions will affect your ability to affect the actions of others. In other words, they will affect your power relative to the power of others. Those agents with a stronger hand given to them by e the economic institutions will very likely also be able to secure a larger share of the pie produced by economic interactions. So, for example, in the ultimatum game, where one of the people found a hundred bucks first and becomes the proposer in the game, the proposer has the bargaining power in that game. The proposer can secure a larger share of the pie by the power vested in them by the rules of the game. Now, also notice how the number of respondents was in negative correlation with their minimal acceptance offer. The more competitors you've had for the share of the pie, the lower the amount each of them is ready to accept. Well, think about another example. Think about the job market. If you're looking at a placement in business after your second year, and there are thousands like you, and only one proposer, then you will very likely accept a very low offer. You can also think about many other examples, and we'll discuss some of them during uh, this week during the live lecture and during these videos. For now, um, it is important to keep in mind what institutions are, why are they important, and what they do to the way economic agents interact. Now, in the next video, we'll see how we apply certain criteria to understand if the economic institutions are efficient and whether they're fair. So, keep watching.